Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we will see how at the rate configuration annotation works in Spring. We will also see the proxy libraries used in Spring Framework. If you want to learn in detail topic wise on Spring Framework, please do check out this Spring playlist on my channel. Also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Now without any further delay, let's start. By now we know Spring provides a number of features and annotations which helps developer to develop a scalable and easily maintainable applications. One of these annotations is at the rate configuration. So what is at the rate configuration? This annotation is used to declare a class as a configuration class in Spring. A configuration class contains methods that define configuration for the Spring application context or the container. These methods are typically annotated with the annotations such as at the rate beans, at the rate component scan, etc., which actually defines how the Spring container should create and manage the beans. So the rules which we were earlier defining in XML can now be defined in Java class with the help of at the rate configuration annotation. If that part is clear, now let's see how does at the rate configuration actually works. So when a class is annotated with at the rate configuration, Spring treats it as a source of bean definitions. This means that Spring will look for at the rate bean methods in that configuration class and register them with the application context. When the application starts, the Spring will create instances of these beans and make them available for the dependency injection into the other classes wherever it is required. If you want to understand in detail the concept of dependency injection and inversion of control, please do check out the video from top right corner of your screen. Now let's take a look at an example for this. In this, we have this configuration class called myConfiguration. It contains two methods annotated with at the rate bean, which define two beans, my bean and another bean. My bean is a simple bean that does not depend on any other bean while another bean depends on my bean itself. So when Spring creates instance of another bean, it will inject an instance of my bean into its constructor. Internally, when a class is annotated with at the rate configuration, Spring creates a bean definition for that class. This bean definition is a blueprint for creating instances of those classes, including any dependencies that class may have. Now to create an instance of at the rate configuration class, Spring uses a very special internal mechanism called CGLib proxy. The CGLib stands for Code Generation Library Proxy. This proxy is created by subclassing the configuration class and overriding any at the rate bean methods to return the actual bean instances. So when Spring creates the application context, it will scan all the at the rate configuration classes in the class path and creates an instance of each one. It then uses the CGLib proxy to create instances of any beans defined in those configuration classes. If this technical definition you are not able to understand, so just wait, it will be clear in the upcoming two or three slides also. For now, just try to understand that there is a proxy which is being created by Spring. So proxy is nothing but an intermediate class. So whenever you try to call a method, so the control first goes to the proxy class and in the proxies, some checks can be defined. So after those checks, proxy then call the actual target method which you have called. So that is the basic mechanism behind this. So just wait for a couple of more slides. You will be able to understand what the CGLib uh, proxy is and how it actually works. So now when a bean is requested from application context, Spring first it will check if it has already been created. If it has, Spring returns the existing instance. If it hasn't, then Spring uses the bean definition to create the new instance of the bean. That is how the Spring IOC container works. So that part we are already clear. So one important thing to note here is that at the rate configuration classes should not be instantiated directly. Instead, they should be registered with the Spring application context 
and this is typically done by including the configuration classes in component scanning processes. So what is that component scanning process? That we can uh, provide a configuration to Spring Framework that you need to scan this particular path to identify if there is any at the rate configuration classes present for the configuration of application. Now let's try to understand a bit more about CGLib. So we know that classes in Java are loaded dynamically at runtime. CGLib is using this particular feature of Java language to make it possible to add new classes to the already running Java program. Those are the new classes which we are talking about are the proxy classes. Hibernate is also using the CGLib for generation of dynamic proxies. So CGLib which is code generation library, it's a very powerful code generation library that is used by Spring to create the dynamic proxies. CGLib is used to create proxies for classes that do not implement any interfaces in Spring. So this is a very important point here because um, Spring is actually using two different kind of uh, proxies. So in case of CGLib, it will only be used to create the proxy for classes that do not implement any interface. CGLib works by creating a subclass of target class at runtime. This subclass overrides the method of the target class and that needs to be intercepted. So let's try to understand the complete flow here. So when a method is called on a target class, the overridden method in CGLib subclass, which is the proxy class that is being called. Then the CGLib subclass can then delegate to the original method in the target class or perform some other operations before or after the target method call here. In the context of Spring, if we say CGLib is used to create proxies for at the rate configuration classes and for classes annotated with at the rate transactional as well. So when Spring creates a proxy for at the rate configuration class, it becomes subclass of that particular class and it overrides all the methods which are defined with at the rate bean annotation. When Spring creates a proxy for transactional class, it subclasses the target class and overrides the transactional method to manage the transaction. So suppose for a configuration class, there are two methods with at the rate bean annotation. So the proxy will first become child of that configuration class and then override those two bean methods also. Inside the overridden method, the call to the actual method will also be given to the target method. One important thing to note that CGLib proxies can only intercept non-final methods. This means that if a method in a target class is marked as final, it cannot be intercepted by a CGLib proxy. Now Spring uses two types of proxies. Number one is CGLib proxies and second one is JDK dynamic proxies. So we have already seen CGLib proxy how it works. Now let's briefly see what are JDK dynamic proxies. So the JDK dynamic proxies are used when target class implements at least one interface. So now you see the difference here. In case of CGLib, it are, they were getting used when actually there was no interface implementation present. But if there is at least one implementation of one interface is present, in those cases, JDK dynamic proxies are used. The proxy is created by the inbuilt Java's proxy class. When a method is called on proxy, the proxy delegates the call to invocation handler, which is responsible for performing some operation before and after the method call. If we talk about in the context of Spring, the JDK dynamic proxies are typically used for AOP, which is aspect oriented programming. So AOP is a kind of programming paradigm that allows cross-cutting concerns such as logging, security, etc. So those can be separated from the main logic of the application. So in our upcoming uh, sessions, we will also see in detail about AOP because AOP is a very important concept in Spring Framework. Spring uses AOP to apply cross-cutting concerns to classes at runtime. For example, Spring can use AOP to log method calls on a specific class. So what we can do, we can define uh, aspects and uh, join points 
so that uh, on a particular methods call if we want to perform some operation before that that also we can uh, declare and if we want to perform some operation after that that also we can declare using aop so the jdk dynamic proxies are generally preferred because they do not require any external libraries and are less intrusive in nature that's it for this video please let me know if you want me to cover some specific topic in spring i hope this video was helpful to you in case you like it please share it across with the dev community and also don't forget to like and comment with your feedback thank you so much for watching keep learning